So mark your own. Number one, how much work is done on the box? Well, I'm pretty sure work equals force times distance, and the work done in lifting or raising, you know what? That's MGH. In fact, it's the change in potential energy. This is the work energy theorem in disguise, where there's no change in kinetic. Find it? Yeah. Okay. So it's going to be 688 times 9.8 times... 2.4. Trying a newer calculator, a different one, a scientific one. 688 times 9.8 times 2.4. Are those numbers big enough, Alicia, for you to actually read the calculator numbers at the back? Okay, that's what I was kind of hoping for. Uh, do you get 16,200 is what I'll write, but I'll store this on my calculator. Units, joules. One mark. How much power? Well, power is work over time. So it's going to be, all right, 16,200. I'm going to use my answer button. Divided by 45. Divided by 45. And I get 359.6. I'll go 359 watts. How much work will I do if I carry an 8.8 .8 kilogram bag 9.3 meters forward? Zero joules of work. Have you changed the object's kinetic energy? Don't think so. Have you changed the object's height? No, no work. The force and the distance were not in the same direction. <coughs> uh, wants me to find force. I think I'm going to go power equals work over time. In fact, instead of writing work, I'm going to go power equals force times distance over time, it seems to me. I think I'm going to find that the force equals the power times the time divided by the distance. The power is 65,000 watts. The distance is 17.5 meters. The time is 35 seconds. So it's going to be, did I write it wrong? Did I do this wrong? Power time, oh, I wrote my numbers wrong. I wrote my equation right, but I put the 35 in the wrong place and the 17.5 in the wrong place. Well, that was kind of silly. Thank you. 65,000 times 35 divided by 17.5. Ooh, this has the fancy schmancy fraction button bonus. 130,000 newtons. And again, F equals what, what? Notice we found force without M or A. I don't know either of those, but okay, a little cleverness. Find the kinetic energy of the bullet. Well, kinetic energy, oh, that last one was two marks. I would probably go something like this. Half mark if I saw that. Half mark if you got the F by itself. Half mark for the numbers and a half mark for the answer. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I just did it in one step. In other words, you found this number, and then you said W equals FD. So you would have multiplied power by time, just like I did, gotten an answer, and divided it by D. I just did it in one step. Yep. This is going to be... Oh, change colors, Mr. Duick. A half mv squared. Really, the only tricky part is I have to convert grams to kilograms, which is 0 0.0042 times 965 squared. A bullet doesn't have much mass. What it does have is a lot of velocity squared. If it hits its target and comes to a stop, where did all that energy get transferred to? The target. This is why bullets do damage.
I get 1,960. Joules of energy. That's also how much work the gun did on the bullet. The gun changed the bullet's kinetic energy. So that tells me how much energy the gun transferred to the bullet. That tells me how much energy I needed from the gunpowder. Lots of information in there. What work is done, on, oh, here it is. What work is done on the bullet if it starts from rest? So you can't really go force times distance, but what you can do is say it's the change in potential plus the change in kinetic. No change in potential. What's the change in kinetic? I think 1,960 joules because there's my final kinetic energy and the initial was from rest. If the work is done over a distance of 0.75 meters, what's the average force? I guess I would say force equals work over distance equals, I'm going to write 1,960, but you know I'm going to use my answer button. Do you get 2,610 newtons? Why did I say average force? I'm pretty sure as the gun goes, uh, as the bullet moves along the barrel, the force isn't constant because what's driving the bullet forward are the compressed gases. And as, the, as it moves down the barrel, there's more space for the gas to expand, therefore less force from the compressed gases. So that's why you often see me see, say average force when I'm talking about gun barrels. I doubt it's constant. Number five, what is the potential energy? Okay, PE should be MGH. Did they give me a height? Yes, they did. So it's going to be 50 times 9.8 times 400. 50 times 9, whoop, 0.8 times 400, you get 196,000 joules of energy. What's the change in potential energy if it falls to a, hmm, what's change in anything? So the change in potential energy is gonna be MGH final minus MGH initial. MGH final is gonna be 50 times 9.8 times 400 minus MGH initial is 50, so not times 400, Mr. Duick. Final is times 200. MGH initial is 50 times 9.8 times 400. I actually just rewrote the 196,000 because it was sitting on my calculator. Half the height, I'm pretty sure it's going to be half the potential energy. So I'm already thinking it's going to be this number divided by 2. Let's confirm that. It's going to be 50 times 9.8 times 200 minus answer button. Why negative? Why negative? We lost energy. Where'd that energy go? Put your pencils down. Pause for a second. Uh, Ryder, uh, kinetic energy, okay. Ke equals a half mv squared. It's gonna be 0. 0.5 times 85 times 8.5. Don't forget the squared. 0. 0.5 times 85 times 8.5 squared. You get 3,070. The rider coasts up a hill. Assuming there is no friction, at what height will the bike come to a stop? How will I solve this? I think this is going to be conservation of energy, not work. I'm going to say, well, there's definitely a change in height and a change in speed. There isn't a yucky, curvy path, but meh. I'll solve this with conservation of energy. In fact, I'm going to take a bit of a shortcut. I'm going to argue that all of your initial kinetic energy is what turns into all of your final potential energy because I'm pretty sure Zena at the top, I come to a stop for a split second. So it's going to be 3070 equals MGH. I'll use my answer button here. H is going to be 
3070 divided by mg divided by bracket 85 times 9.8 was the m85 i think it was yeah and i get 3.8 3.69, 3.7, 3.69 meters. Am I wrong? No, I did 3.75 because I don't think I used my answer. Oh, you did extra typing for less accuracy? Really? Last couple. Uh, what happens to its kinetic energy if we double its velocity? Four times larger. What if we triple its velocity? What if we quadruple its velocity? And so, I, I, and I want to get serious just for a moment to all of you young drivers, especially I'm talking mostly to males because you're the stupidest behind steering wheels. Slow down. Slow down. Toy car is at the top of a ramp, 2.3 meters tall. If we ignore friction, how much kinetic energy will it have when it reaches the bottom of the ramp? Okay, I guess I'm going to use conservation of energy, but I think what I'm going to end up with is that all of my potential is going to turn into kinetic. And so the kinetic final, this is part A, is going to be MGH initial. It's going to be 3.5 times 9.8 times 2.3. And I get 78.9, 78.89, 78.9 joules of energy. For three marks, that'll get you, I think, one mark. And you know what? Just to, I'll make each of these 1.5, so I'd probably give you a half mark if I saw that somewhere along the way. B. What will its speed be? So I think I'm going to go V equals 2 times the kinetic energy divided by the mass square root. Or I could go kinetic energy divided by 0.5 M square root. He missed that going to be 2 times 78.9. Kessler, you know I'm going to use my answer button. I mean, why wouldn't I? It's so obvious. 2 times answer button divided by 3.5. Square root answer. Do you get 6.71? And I would probably give you Oh, I don't know. I'd probably give you one mark if I saw that and a half mark for the answer because really it's more important that you know how to do it. Can you give yourself a lovely score, please, out of 16? What's Nothing. Because the force is gravity and the distance is horizontal, you're not doing the physics definition of work.